Good morning, and thank you everybody for joining me. My name is Michael, and we are continuing into the Word of God. We are now in chapter 4 of the book of Judges. Um, just started Judges yesterday, got the first three chapters taken care of, and now we're on to the next three chapters. Um, it's going to involve the prophetess Deborah, or Deborah, not Deborah, and Barak. Um, Barak was a judge, Deborah was a prophet or prophetess. Um, we'll also see the song of, Debo of Deborah. I don't know why I keep wanting to say Deborah. Uh, Deborah and Barak. And then chapter 6 is where Midian oppresses Israel, the call for Gideon, and the destruction of the altar of Baal. Um, so those are some of the three main keynotes over what we're going to be speaking of um, in regards to the next few chapters here. Always in keep, always keeping in. Yeah, I don't know where I was going with whatever I was saying. Um, do you want to offer this extra little picture that's from chapter six in my Rory Bible study Bible? Um, but this is the judges and their homelands and the timelines and their names. I'll try to get it as close as possible. Let it sit there so maybe you can pause the screen. Sorry if it's backwards. Trying to get it perfect for you to pause. So that way you can study that and just see where they were stationed around um, throughout Israel in regards to whoever was judge at that time, the time frame, you know. Um, but yeah, so we'll go ahead and get started on chapter four. Let me get my notes ready. I'm trying to get the side notes because I realized that for the first few chapters, um, I didn't go over any of the side notes, which I apologize for. Um, so I will attempt to get the remaining amount of them in, or at least go over them briefly before we end the video. Just to give us as much knowledge and explanation as we can get because we want to understand God's word fully and be able to comprehend what he's trying to say to us and there's many before us that have spent their lifetime in search of this and so we get to piggyback off of their work um, which is great for us because one it takes a lot of leg work out but it doesn't really because you still end up needing to put just as much work into actually studying it into, you know, like you have so many that have done this for so long that they have the, that, that consistency in their findings. Um, okay, but yeah, enough jabbering on for three and a half minutes. Uh, so yeah, again, we will start in chapter four of the book of Judges, um, titled Deborah and Barak. And the people of Israel again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord after Yehud died. And the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor. Uh, the commander of his army was Sisera, who lived in Harasheth Hagayim. Then the people of Israel cried out to the Lord for help, for he had 900 chariots of iron, and he oppressed the people of Israel cruelly for 20 years. Now Deborah, the prophetess, the prophetess, the wife of Lapiadoth, was judging Israel at that time. She used to sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the people of Israel came up to her for judgment. She went and summoned Barak, the son of Obinoam, and, and from Kadesh Naphtali, and said to him, Has not the Lord, the God of Israel, commanded you? Go gather your men at Mount Tabor, taking 10,000 people, taking 10,000 from the people of Naphtali and the people of Zebulun. And I will draw out Sisera, the general of Jabin's army, to meet you by the river Kishon with its chariots and his troops, and I will give him into your hand. 
Barak said to her, If you will go with me, I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. And she said, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, the road on which you are going will not lead to your glory, for the Lord will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. Then Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. And Barak called out Zebulon and Naphtali to Kadesh. And ten thousand men went up at his heels. And Deborah went up with him. Now Hebir the Kenite and had separated from the Kenites the descendants of Hobab, Hobab the father-in-law of Moses, and had pitched his tent as far away as the oak in Zanininim, which is near Kadesh. When Sisera was told that Barak, the son of Abinoam, had gone up to Mount Tabor, Sisera called out all his chariots, nine hundred chariots of iron, and all the men who were with them, from Heshereth Hagoyim to the river Kishon. And Deborah said to Barak, Up, for this is the day in which the Lord has given Sisera into your hand. Does not the Lord go out before you? So Barak went down from Mount Tabor with ten thousand men following him, and the Lord routed Sisera and all his chariots and all his army before Barak by the edge of the sword. And Sisera got down from his chariot and fled away on foot. And Barak pur pursued the chariots and the army of Hersheth Hagoyim, and all the army of Sisera fell by the edge of the sword. Not a man was left. But Sisera fell, fled away on foot to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber the Canite. For there was a peace between Jab and the king of Hazor and the house of Heber the Kenite. And Jael came out to meet Sisera and, meet, and said to him, Turn aside, my lord, turn aside to me, do not be afraid. So he turned aside to her into the tent, and she covered with him, the rug, with him a rug. And he said to her, Please give me a little water to drink, for I am thirsty. So she opened a skin of milk and gave him a drink and covered him. And he said to her, Stand at the opening of the tent, and if any man comes and asks you, Is there anyone here? Say no. But Jael, the wife of Heber, took a tent peg and took a hammer in her hand. Then she went softly to him and drove the peg into his temple until it went down into the ground while he was lying fast asleep from weariness. So he died. And behold, as Barak was pursuing Sisera, Jael went out to meet him and said to him, Come, I will show you the man whom you were seeking. So he went into her tent, and, it lay, and there lay Sisera dead, with the tent peg in his temple. So on that day God subdued Job and the king of Canaan before the people of Israel. And the hand of the people of Israel pressed harder and harder against Jabin the king of Canaan, until they destroyed Jabin, king of Canaan. Um, so that is the end of chapter four, little keynotes key to go back on to. Um, so from verse two, this Jabin ruled about a century later than the one mentioned in Josh. Um, Hazor, the most important stronghold in North Canaan, was four miles southwest of Lake Hela on a principal trade route. Um, from four, four other prophetic prophetesses were Miriam, Holda, which is in Kings, we haven't gotten there yet. Noadiah, which is from Nehemiah, and Anna from Luke, and Philip's four daughters, which are going to be in the book of Acts. Um, the river Kishon was a stream that flows through the valley of Jezreel from verse 7, and a parenthetical note from verse 11, introducing the family of Jael. Um, from verse 15, according to chapter 5, verse 21, which is going to be in the Song of Deborah, the Lord sent rain that flooded the stream and valley, neutralizing the chariots. A similar thing that happened with Napoleon, when Napoleon defeated the Turks in the same place in A.D. 1799. Um, so a bottle of milk or yogurt from a skin bottle. Um, 421, the nail of a tent, bed and tent peg. For more details, the mail and tent peg were easily accessible since pitching a tent was the woman's job. Um, so she had readily access available to it. Obviously, I'm assuming it's something probably about this big because it said that it drove into the ground. So... It had to go in from one side of the temple all the way through and into the ground. 
Um, this chapter contains, oh, chapter five. Okay, so that's all the side notes for chapter four. Now chapter five, the song of Deborah and Barak. Then sing Deborah and Barak, the son of Obanoam, Abinoam, on that day, that the leaders took the lead in Israel, and that, that the people offering themselves willingly bless the Lord. Hear, O kings, give ear, O princes, to the Lord I will sing. I will make melody to the Lord, the God of Israel. Lord, when you went out from Sair, when you marched from the region of Edom, the earth trembled and the heavens dropped. Yes, the clouds dropped water. The mountains quaked before the Lord, even Sinai before the Lord, the God of Israel. In the days of Shamgar, son of Anath, in the days of Jael, the highways were abandoned, and travelers kept to the byways. The villagers ceased in Israel. They ceased to be until I arose. I, Deborah, rose as a mother in Israel. When new gods were chosen, then war was in, war, then war was in the gates. Was shield or spear to be seen among 40,000 in Israel? My heart goes out to the commanders of Israel, who offered themselves willingly among the people. Bless the Lord. Tell of it, you who ride on white donkeys, you who sit on rich carpets, and you who walk by the walk to the sound of musicians at the watering places. There they repeat the righteous triumphs of the Lord, the righteous triumphs of his villagers in Israel. Then down to the gates marched the people of the Lord. Awake, awake, Deborah, awake, awake. Break out in a song. Arise, Barak, lead away your captives, O son of Abinoam. Then down marched the remnant of the noble. The people of the Lord marched down for me against the mighty. From Ephraim their foot they root their marched from Ephraim their root they marched down into the valley, following you, Benjamin, with your kinsmen. From Machir marched down from down the commanders, and from Zebulun those who bear the lieutenant's staff. The princes of Issachar came with Deborah, and Issachar faithful to Barak, Barak, into the valley they rushed at his heels. Among the clans of Reuben there were great searchings of heart. Why did you sit still along the sheepfolds to hear the whistling for the flocks? Among the clans of Reuben there were, there were great searchings of heart. Gilead stayed beyond the Jordan, and Dan, why did he stay with the ships? Asher sat still at the coast of the sea, staying by his landing. Zebulon is a people who risked their lives to the death. Naphtali, too, on the heights of the field. The kings came, they fought. Then fought the kings of Canaan at Tanakh by the waters of Megiddo. They got no spoils of silver from heaven the stars fought. From their courses they fought against Sisera. The torrent Kishon swept with them away. The ancient torrent, the torrent Kishon. March on my soul with might. Then load, bear, then load beat the horse's hoofs with the galloping, galloping of his steeds. Curse Miros, says the angel of the Lord. Curse its inhabitants thoroughly, because they did not come to the help of the Lord, to the help of the Lord against the mighty. Most blessed of women be Jael, the wife of Hebor, the Kenite, of tent-dwelling women most blessed. He asked for water, and she gave him milk. She brought him curds in a noble's bowl. She sent her hand to the tent peg and her right hand to the workman's mallet. She stuck Sisera. She crushed his head. She shattered and pierced his temple between her feet he sank he fell he lay still between her feet he sank he fell where he sank there he fell dead out of the window she peered the mother of Sisera wailed through the lattice why is his chariot so long in coming why tarry the hoofbeats of his chariots her wisest princess answer indeed she answers herself have they not found and divided the spoil a womb or two for every man, spoil of dyed materials for Sisera, spoil of dyed materials embroidered, two spike pieces of dyed work embroidered for the neck of spoil. So may all your enemies perish, O Lord, but your friends be like the sun as he rises in his might. And the land had rest for forty years. Um, so just some keynotes over in chapter five, which just in reading this, I can't wait to get to like psalms and proverbs like i really enjoy all of it like they're it's really hard to say a favorite because like it's all 
really good. Um, but just through in reading this, like Proverbs and Psalms are going to be a fun, interesting take in how we approach that. Um, but anyways, so keynotes from chapter five from vibe one. This chapter contains the poetic version of the prose account. Basically, it, it's a poetic um, version of what happened, the battle, uh, what led up to the battle, during the battle, after the battle. Um, uh, from 5-6, Shamgar, because the Canaanites controlled the highways, the Israelites had to use other routes, which is why they stuck close. Um, from 5-8, Israel turned to idolatry and was unarmed. Um, Reuben, Reuben, Gilead, Dan, and Asher refused to join in the battle against Sisera. A reference to the, uh, from 520, a reference to the cloud burst God sent, um, which is from heaven the stars fought, from their courses they fought against Sisera. Uh, from 522, apparently the hooves of the horses stomped the ground in their effort to escape the flood of water. Um, from 523, the town of Moroz did not help the Israelites and was cursed for it. Um, so butter in a lordly dish. From 525, he asked for water and she gave him milk. She brought him curds in a noble's bowl, which curds in a large bowl is basically because my Ryrie is King James. Um, so it does read a little differently on the verbiage the wordage is exactly the same but the verbiage and how yeah anyways you should know this um 528 to 530 the scene shifts to Cicero's home his mother's concern is abated by the assurance that the delay in Cicero's return was caused by the dividing of the spoils oh so from there Okay, okay, yeah, I was wondering about that. Yeah. Ah, okay, 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 that, that, that clarity to the last five or six verses. <coughs> All right, so final chapter, we are on chapter six. Let's see what time it is real quick, 48. Yeah, I got time. All right. Um, so chapter 6, Midian oppresses Israel. Now the people of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord gave into the hand of Midian seven years. And the hand of Midian overpowered Israel. And because of Midian, the power of Israel, the people of Israel, made for themselves the dens that are in the mountains and the caves and the strongholds. For whenever the Israelites planted crops, the Midianites and the Amalekites and the people of the east would come up against them. They would encamp against them and devour the produce of the land as far as Gaza and leave no sustenance in Israel and no sheep or ox or donkey. For they would come up with their livestock in their tents. They would come like locusts in number, both it, and they and their camels could not be counted. So that they laid waste the land as they came in, and Israel was brought very low because of Midian, and the people of Israel cried out for help to the Lord. When the people of Israel cried out to the Lord on account of the Midianites, the Lord had sent a prophet to the people of Israel, and he said to them, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I led you up from Egypt and brought you out of the house of slavery, and I delivered you from the hand of the Egyptians and from the hand of all who oppressed you, and drove them out before you and gave you their land. And I said to you, I am the Lord your God. You shall not fear the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but you have not obeyed my voice. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth of Aphra, which belonged to Joash the Avarazite, while his son of Gideon was beating out wheat in the, in the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, O mighty man of valor. And Gideon said to him, Please, sir, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all those wonderful deeds that our fathers recounted to us? saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and given us into the hand of Midian. And the Lord has turned to him and said, Go in, his, in this might of yours and save Israel from the hand of Midian. Do not I send you? 
And he said to him, Please, Lord, how can I save Israel? Behold, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said to him, But I will be with you, and you shall strike the Midianites as one man. And he said to him, If I... If now I have found favor in your eyes, then show me a sign that it is you who speak with me. Please do not depart from here until I come to you, and bring out my present and set it before you. And he said, I will stay till you, till you return. So Gideon went into his house and prepared a young goat and unleavened cakes from the ephah of flour. The meat he put in a basket and the broth he put in a pot, and brought them to him under the terebinth and presented them. And the angel of God said to him, Take the meat and the unleavened cakes and put them on this rock and pour the broth over them. And he did so. Then the angel of the Lord reached out the tip of the staff that was in his hand and touched the meat of the, uh, and the unleavened cakes. And fire sprang up from the rock and consumed the meat and the unleavened cakes. And the angel of the Lord vanished from his sight. Then Gideon, Gideon perceived that he was the angel of the Lord. And Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for now I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. But the Lord said to him, Peace be to you. Do not fear. You shall not die. Then Gideon built an altar there to the Lord and called it, The Lord is Peace. To this day it still stands at Ophrah, which belongs to the Abrazites. That night the Lord said to him, Take your father's bull, and the second bull seven years old, and pull down the altar of Baal that your father has. And cut down the Asherah that is beside it, and build an altar to the Lord your God on the top of the stronghold there, with stones laid in due order. Then take the second bull, and offer it as a burnt offering with the wood of the Asherah that ye shall cut down. So Gideon took ten men of his servants, and did as the Lord had told him. But because he was too afraid of his family, the men, out of, the, men of the town, because he was... Too afraid of his family and the men of the town to do it by day, he did it by night. Uh, verse 28. When, uh, when the men of town arose early in the morning, behold, the altar of Baal was broken down, and the Asherah beside it was cut down. And the second bull was offered on the altar and had, that had been built. And they said to one another, Who has done this thing? And after they searched and inquired, they said, Gideon, the son of Joash, has done this thing. Then the men of the town said to Joash, Bring out your son, that he may die, for he has broken down the altar of Baal and cut down the Asherah beside it. But Joash said to all who stood against him, Will you contend for Baal, or will you save him? Whoever contends for him shall be put to death by, the mor by morning. If he is a god, let him contend for himself, because his altar has been broken down. Therefore, on that day, Gideon was called Jerubbabel. There to his day, let Baal contend against him, because he broke down his altar. Now all the Midianites and the Amalekites and the people of the east came together, and they crossed the Jordan and camped in the valley of Jezreel. But the Spirit of the Lord clothed Gideon, and he sounded the trumpet, and the Abiezrites were called out to follow him, and he sent messengers throughout all Manasseh. And they too were called out to follow him. And he sent messengers to Asher, Zebulon, and Naphtali. And they went up to meet him. And for final verses, the sign of the fleece. Then Gideon said to God, If you save Israel by my hand, as you have said, behold, I am laying a fleece of wool on the threshing floor. If there is a dew on the fleece alone, and it is dry on all the ground, then I shall know that you will save Israel. By my hand, as you have said. And it was so. When he arose early next morning and squeezed the fleet, he wrung enough dew from the fleece to fill a bowl with water. Then Gideon said to God, Let not your anger burn against me. Let me speak just once more. Please let me test just once more with the fleece. Please let it be dry on the fleece only, and on all the ground let there be dew. And God did so that night, and it was dry on the fleece only. And on all the ground, there was dew. All right, so that is going to be the conclusion of our reading this morning. A little side notes from chapter 6. 6-3, um, the Amalekites, the children of the east, included other nomads from the Syrian desert region. Um, from verse 5, 
the seasonal raiders on Israel's crops are likened to grasshoppers or locusts. Innumerable and devastating, the use of camels made long-distance raids possible. Um, from chapter 11, an angel of the Lord, another theophany, and the note on Genesis 6, 19, Abiezer was the son of Manasseh, Gideon's threshing wheat by the winepress rather than on an exposed threshing floor was an act of desperation, lest the Midianites discover and seize even a small amount that could be threshed that way. Um, from 621, fire, the, the sign of divine acceptance of Gideon's offering. Um, 622, an angel, better, the angel. Um, let's see here. Shalom means peace from 624. I really hope I said shalom. Uh, the wood of the grove. No, nothing there. Um, from 630, so deep was their commitment to idolatry that these men were eager to kill the one who destroyed the altar of Baal. Of Baal. Um, Joash's logic is irre irrefutable. A god who can't save himself is not worth worshipping. Uh, Jerubbabel, the meaning is let Baal contend. Um, Jezreel from verse 33 is the eastern part of the plain of Megiddo and the historic battleground in the heart of Palestine. Um, here it is said that the spirit literally clothed Gideon in verse 34. And in 39, Gideon eventually realized that the, per the previous sign may not have been a sign at all, since the ground would naturally have dried before the fleece, fleece or shorn wool. Um, and so that will be the end of the side notes. Um, so hope you enjoyed the reading this morning, as always. Um, it's a pleasure to be doing this with you. If you haven't accepted Christ into your life, I would offer to make amends with that. Um, time is fleeting and fast approaching. So the evidence is irrefutable. If you can just humble yourself down to realize that we need somebody and we need Christ, then you'll be on the right track. But the evidence is irrefutable. It's all in here. The entire book screams of him. But uh, as God does as well, we'll let you make your own choice. Um, just choose the right one. Um, but we do love you. Um, hope you have a wonderful day. Enjoy the rest of your week in the Lord. And we will see you tomorrow morning for the continuation of Judges. Have a wonderful day.